Now, some of you may know DeepSeek as the AI that brought gamers joy, not because they liked the AI, but because it crashed the Nvidia stocks, allowing people to finally afford a three-year-old GeForce card. It's the biggest competitor ChatGPT has seen, and it's from China. So don't ask it what happened in Tiananmen Square. But you might want to think about asking it anything because recently they exposed their database with over a million chat records. And this was data that hackers could have accessed and could be on the dark web. Now, the reason I want to talk about this more is because this could be a problem in all future AI models, including ChatGPT. So you have to be very careful about the type of information that you're typing in as the search queries, because a lot of the people using these platforms are using it for personal reasons. They're using it to summarize a document for them. And those documents could include personal details. And if that information ends up being public, or as in this case, if it was stored in plain text form, along with the API keys, backend details, you could be in trouble if all of that data ends up on the dark web. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say we open up ChatGPT. One of the first things that kind of shows up is summarized text. And if I say summarize, look at the kind of things people are summarizing. Summarize my lease agreement. You know the information that's in your lease agreement, your name, your address, your phone number. It literally has all the details of where you live, the condition of the house, how to get in, how many keys there are. And if you are submitting this information in plain text online, like you're putting a lot of trust in the company to secure your data. And if they don't, you could be in big trouble if that data is on the dark web. So do not use ChatGPT to summarize your lease agreement and definitely not deep seek from China. And judging from the description, this was not a very sophisticated hack even. They actually publicly exposed their databases. So anyone could go to this URL and type in an SQL command. So SQL is structured query language. It's kind of like a command line version of Excel. So you could type in, select this data from this table and it would give you back the answer. And it did not require authentication. Now, what's also concerning is that this data is easily accessible. So even if they locked it now, because they have, it means that one of their employees could easily get it. And the data that was exposed included a log stream table, and this includes user queries to DeepSeek's chatbot. So if you went on their website, type something in, it could be there. Keys used to authenticate the API calls. So if you're a developer using this, then you might want to reset set your keys. And the rest is kind of like their internal information, which we don't care about, unless of course it gets them hacked or <laughs> infiltrated by ransomware, and then all of your data ends up being public. But what's also concerning is not only could an attacker retrieve sensitive logs, they could also potentially exfiltrate plain text passwords using the simple select star from file command. Here's some uh, screenshots of the tables that you can get back. So you just say select star from log stream limit 10 and you get the answer back. It's amazing what you can still do with basic SQL knowledge in 2025. Now this hack was discovered by researchers, thankfully, but who knows? I mean, hackers may have done it, just not disclosed it yet. As it says, it's unknown if Wiz researchers were the first to discover this exposure or if malicious actors have already taken advantage of the misconfiguration. Now, despite DeepSeek being from China, one of the benefits of using it is you can actually download it, try to run it locally, which gives you some privacy. But I would seriously warn against using a lot of personal information when using chatbots. And let's say you want to get advice. Get advice on salary negotiation. Get advice on moving to a new city. Again, a lot of these questions could have personal details like your address. You don't want to be sending that information, not just because the company may just sell it, which let's be honest, if you're using things like DeepSeek, we have no idea what their goals are. Or even with ChatGPT, given that OpenAI has changed its mission and goal several times. When thinking about using AI, a lot of the time I think about Malcolm from Jurassic Park. They were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And a lot of people are doing that with AI. They're using it as a toy. Doesn't matter if it actually is better. Doesn't matter if they actually need it. They're like, oh, cool. Let me send it my lease agreement. Let me ask it to design my house. 
else. And if you're sending large volumes of personal information and it turns out the AI company actually exposed their database publicly, you will have a lot to worry about. If any of you are using AI tools like ChatGPT, and I know many of you are, make sure you get rid of any personal information before sending in your queries. I do think there needs to be more discussion on what kind of data goes into AI because a lot of people are even using it for things like mail automation, in which case, again, if that gets hacked, and we have seen instances, I've been to conferences where I've seen actual hacks of email clients using AI that allows attackers to basically send any email they want on your behalf. Things like that could be used for ransom. There's a lot of potential for bad actors. And as more and more small companies just keep adding AI stuff, things are going to break. Hackers are going to have a field day and you don't want to be one of those people who ends up being the victim. So be very careful about the AI tools you're using, what kind of data they have access to, and don't just blindly trust them with everything. Now I wanted to see what else we can find on this. So I'm doing a search here on Flare, which is going to look at private chat rooms, Telegram, the dark web. And one of the first things that comes up is very interesting. So apparently Korea's interior ministry warns against deep sea because of the data leak concern. And this was posted in a chat room, Cyberspace Monitoring. We can also see discussions here of DeepSeek opening the registrations. And we can look at the categories here. So we've got references in the open web, illicit networks. Of course, 4chan thinks Trump will ban DeepSeek. We've also got a post in Russian here. It seems like most of discussions are Telegram chat rooms. But of course, if any of your data is leaked, let's say you put in your email address or some kind of personal information, you could do a search in Flare. I'm just going to type in the PC security channel as an example, but it's going to tell you where your name is being mentioned. If it's out there in dark web forums, if it's on GitHub. So if you want to keep an eye on the dark web, Flare is an interesting platform to check out. They are the sponsor of this video and a lot of our other educational content. So if you'd like to monitor the dark web for any kind of information about your devices being compromised, you can check them out using link in description. If you're an organization, this is actually a great way to know if any of your employees have been compromised and take action early. But again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share it if you did. And thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.